Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining the Simplifying DLP with, with Symantec ICA, Information-Centric Analytics. My name is Christopher Stewart. I am the Security and Compliance Manager here at NetX. Today presenting to you will be our product specialist, Stephen Grossman. Before I turn it over to Stephen, I want to take a few minutes to, get, to let you know who we are as a company and what we do. We consider ourselves an engineering company first and hold 50 technical accreditations for Symantec, Veritas, and Pure Storage, to name a few of our key business partners. Our capabilities include information security, cloud solution, data protection, business continuity, e-discovery, storage, and mobile management, just to name a few. With that being said, we appreciate you joining our webinar and understand your time is valuable. All of your lines have been muted and we ask that you enter any questions in the chat window. Today's webinar is being recorded and will be available for download on our website at www.netxinc.com, netx.com. I will now turn it over to Stephen. Thanks so much, Chris. Good afternoon, everybody. So today we're going to be talking about simplifying DLP with information-centric analytics, ICA. And um, what we're going to focus on today is how you go about optimizing and making the most of your DLP investment. And so we'll, we'll walk through a few slides just to get a, a sense of how it works and then dive into a demo. Um, some of the potential challenges that we see with DLP implementations is it's kind of a balancing act. Um, volume of DLP incidents need to be prioritized, you need to identify false positives, really separating those malicious actors from the careless users, the broke, broken business processes, as well as identifying those careless users and broken business processes in order to uh, do something about them, right, because they create a lot of volume um, that, that you need to scrutinize and, and deal with. Uh, and managing your policies against that volume to make sure, again, that, that you're, you're catching the bad guys and you're, you're minimizing your risk while um, while being able to manage it with the uh, the staff that you have. And a lot of that is pivoting the view. So taking all that, that goodness, all that value that DLP is providing, and it's providing a huge amount of value uh, in, in stopping data from going out the door, identifying when something is, is going wrong, and being able to, uh, to flag those incidents, but pivoting that, all, all those golden nuggets into a risk orientation so that you understand what's really risky, what's really not risky, what's unusual and what's normal, uh, looking at things from, from all different perspectives, what, whether it's a, a channel perspective, whether it's an organizational perspective, a policy perspective, to be able to, to make the most um, of what you have. And so some of the trends that are, are driving that uh, are around the, uh, the talent shortage, right? We all, we've all heard about the talent shortage and, and the need to optimize how we're using our, our talent and our resources, uh, as well as managing the migration to the cloud, right? The LP15 is very cloud-centric and um, adds a lot of capabilities in that way and a lot of visibility to what's going on in the cloud and, and taking advantage of that uh, to, to its, uh, to its uh, farthest extent is really a, a key goal here. And finally, GDPR, that's the, the buzzword of the year. Everybody's worried about GDPR. Uh, which is all about data privacy uh, of European uh, personal data, and DLP is, is a key piece of the puzzle to be able to um, stop that data from going out the door and to get the visibility into the exposure and, and the handling of the uh, the sensitive data in your organization. And so part of that is being able to optimize incident triage, understanding what's normal and can be ignored or what needs to be dealt with, dealt with later, what's abnormal and dangerous and needs to be handled right now, being able to handle it um, in a, uh, again, in a, in a user perspective or a person perspective, not so much just from an incident by incident perspective, um, and a prioritization perspective, right? What needs to be done now, what could be taken care of a little bit later, you know, what's first, what's second, and, and simplifying your policies and optimizing your policies to minimize false positives and to, uh, to focus on those behaviors and those activities that matter the most. And the way we do that in DLP is with a combination of unsupervised and supervised learning. Unsupervised learning 
looks at what's normal and what's not normal from a few different lenses. It looks at whether it's normal based on the user's own history, whether it's normal based on the history of his peers, so people with the same manager, or the history of people in the same organization. And using those three lenses, uh, we're able to optimize and reduce the false positives to identify those behaviors that are truly abnormal um, that, that could also be then be tied to malicious behavior or um, other types of behavior that needs to be dealt with. So for example, if you see a group of, of people with the same manager all violating the same policy in a very consistent kind of way, it may lead you to identify a broken business process, which is not only creating a lot of risk, but is also um, creating a lot of noise in the environment and helping you identify those processes to be able to, uh, to fix them. In combination with that unsupervised learning, which ha machine learning, which happens automatically, so to speak, we also have supervised machine learning. And what that does is it takes the input of the analyst. So as the analyst is going through and remediating uh, people and their events and, and, and their behaviors, um, ICA is keeping track of that and, and allows the analyst to be able to categorize the different kinds of events in order for it to automatically handle those events in the future. And so those frequently occurring alerts that, that, uh, that may be consistent with, with your policies and your business processes can be suppressed um, in, in a behavior-oriented way. So I'm not just saying suppress this, this event every time it shows up, but it's, it's essentially saying to suppress um, those kind of events when they happen in the context that, that they were categorized by the, the analyst. Um, and then finally, prioritizing flagging, uh, be, being able to understand uh, where are things today versus yesterday and understanding those, those trends um, to, to best act. So um, names of the uh, innocent have been changed to protect them, um, but a uh, major client ex sample customer success story around DLP simplification and making those that of DLP, it's a Fortune 100 media and communication company that greatly increase their efficiency and, and effectiveness uh, by combining DLP and other adjacent tooling like web proxy, threat intelligence, asset management, and others in order to extend the value of DLP and, and really, uh, in a very real world way, be able to A, suppress a lot of the false positives, B, um, remediate broken business processes and, and careless users by providing training based on behavior, um, and making the most out of that DLP investment, uh, all with a flat IT sec budget, um, handling more incidents across more channels, um, providing the best path through remediation without having to hire uh, additional analysts. And um, an extension, uh, as I'd mentioned, 80% of, of the incidents proved to be uh, low risk, internal careless user type of uh, type of incidents. And so being able to automate the suppression of those events or, or target those events towards training uh, was a key way of optimizing the environment because not only does it reduce that risk of, of those careless users, but in addition to that, it also allows the, the actual malicious activity going on to stand out a lot more than if it was hiding uh, beneath the noise, so to speak, um, of false positives and, and of non-malicious activity. And so that combination of automated machine learning that tells you uh, what's normal, what's not normal, combined with, with scenarios that tell you what's good and bad, uh, you have the ability here to, uh, to, to suppress the, the rest of the volume using the supervised learning in order to, again, uh, be able to highlight and focus in on, on the, the most important events to stop the, uh, the bad guys from, from uh, getting the data out the door, whether it's an insider or a compromised account. And I should note what I'm focusing on today is ICA's ability to uh, help you make the most of your DLP investment. I am not touching upon um, its other capabilities, whether it's around more advanced uh, malicious insider threat detection or cyber breach detection or, or the such or other risk management capabilities it has. Really, I'm focusing in today purely on the, on the DLP uh, improvement and acceleration. Um, and finally, um, clear dashboard for, for clear rapid status that allows you to, to dive in and, and, and remediate, right? So it, this is your list of prioritized uh, people, prioritized events, uh, prioritized behaviors, 
in, in order to be able to, uh, to, to get to the most important things first uh, and remediate them, um, as well as the ability to do safe searches and, and other flexible things to be able to just look further, do some hunting to, to find the nuggets um, you're trying to find. As part of that, that, that machine learning, the, the unsupervised machine learning, um, once, once the analyst has determined the need uh, to review the actions of a specific user, they can click through to this view of ICA, ICA's uh, personal overview, which uh, gives you the important contextual information, including which particular risk vectors this person has violated that incurred the DLP alert, right? And how that activity stacks up relative to others in the organization uh, as, as mentioned earlier, those um, themselves, those on the same team, those in the same organization, um, and what steps may need to be taken in order to uh, to remediate them. And so, what you're seeing here are, is, is our radar diagram that tells you and shows you where where this user stack ranked in, in terms of these different um, what we call risk vectors. Many many risk vectors come out of the box, um, and, and can, others can be configured very easily through the user interface. Uh, by administrators, uh, but in this case, we're looking at things like repeat policy event offender, um, which may be a careless user, multiple methods, multiple methods per hour, which may indicate somebody trying to exfiltrate data um, and running into some walls, but but ultimately getting the data out, um, as well as other kinds of uh, risk vectors like endpoint data in motion, network data in motion, um, and the such. Uh, just a point of, of language here. Um, DIM stands for data in motion, and, and that includes um, DLP uh, activity and, and others, other kinds of activity that uh, that is also going to be uh, that's also going to reflect data moving within the organization or out of the organization. And once you determine um, where you want to go with this, right? Analysts can then dig dig in further into the data in motion incident search interface. Right, and they can drill in to see very quick summary, how many incidents, how many matches, what's the normality, the, the color coding here tells you whether it's normal, whether, whether it's not normal, um, as well as very quick summaries of what's common and different amongst the set of events. Again, this, this is pivoting from a, an event by event view into a, a group of events that are either gonna be grouped by a person or by a user or, or by a type of uh, activity that took place. Um, and allows the analyst very quick um, insights into this information to be able to uh, to be able to uh, take the, the the appropriate action. One click um, can remediate many many incidents, and so looking at these incidents as a as an action as an activity um, is what helps you uh, act more efficiently. And being able to escalate and be able to to classify and, and mitigate these different incidents um, all in one shot is is a uh, is a key benefit as well. And as you're going along, of course, there are metrics to to measure progress, and, and these, these metric dashboards provide a, a really visual way of, of tracking these critical changes, these trends to the DLP incidents over time. So the DLP teams, the security teams, upper management, executive teams um, get, can see where things are at and where they're going and where, where they've been. Um, and, and key to understand where the risks have increased over time, where the improvements to the risk posture are being appreciated in the total percentage statistics on these critical metrics um, gives you a, a real quick snapshot understanding of you know where things are going well, what, what, what's the good news, and, and where do you still have work to do. And so just in summary, um, we're going to show you a, a demo in just a moment. Um, but essentially, this is all about simplifying incident triage, incident remediation, and policy management in order to be able to make the most of your uh, DLP investment and, and your investment in other tools as well um, to be able to prioritize what's most important. Um, to deal with those things that are less important but still creating risk in your environment and, and creating noise in your environment, as well as being able to track the, the metrics and to track the uh, how you're doing along the way to to, to know where you need to uh, improve and where you need to uh, where you're doing well. So with that, I'm going to uh, 
shift to a demonstration. Chris, um, is, there a, uh, is there a channel for Q&A here? There should be one listed, yes. And so anybody has any questions, they can enter it into the, uh, into the user interface. Correct. Excellent. Okay. And so this is ICA. And uh, within ICA, what we're going to do today is, is kind of think in terms of the life of, of an analyst, right? Phil the analyst. And so um, Phil is going to start at, at a very high point um, and understand the trends of what's been going on over the last 30 days. What you're seeing in front of you is a, is a visual overview by channel of the DLP incidents that, uh, that have occurred. And this is going to give insights to Phil to be able to, to understand um, what's going on from an insider threat point of view. Uh, we do have a number of other out-of-the-box dashboards around outsider threats, remediation, um, in terms of performance of remediation to, to allow you to understand how your remediators are performing and, and uh, how they're doing from, from different uh, incident type of point of view, agent coverage in terms of making sure that your uh, DLP and, and other tool sets are, have been fully deployed across your, your asset base and, and other um, types of, of dashboards. Um, but getting back here, just focusing in on this dashboard, what we can do is, is we can look at this trend, we can look at the top risky users and start to, uh, to understand where things are going. And so I can, I can turn different types of incidents on and off. And what I'm seeing here is that if I see a, uh, a peak, I can drill in on this peak by clicking on it and understanding what's, what are the, who are the people and what are the um, activities that took place um, on that day. And so what you're seeing here is the list of users and, and you're seeing risk scores. And it's important to note that risk scores are, are oriented based on those risk vectors and based on the uh, behavior of the users. Uh, and so you're able to very quickly understand what the, the risk profile is of the users um, at hand. I can drill through on these users as well. So I'm going to just back up for just one, one moment and, and do that from here. And so if I, I look down here, I have a list again of the top riskiest users. You're seeing people in the 100th percentile here. Um, and it gives you the, the, the full list, full list, with a risk rating based on that risk score as well as other information around organization and, and the different types of activity that went into this. I can right mouse click on this user and click through on this user to um, get an understanding um, of, of their activities and, and, uh, and what's going on here. And so if I click on, on Bruce, uh, the, the first piece of information to point out here is up at the top, you're seeing all the information about Bruce. And this gives you some context. Um, to, to uh, where, what Bruce, who Bruce is and where he is in the organization, who his manager is, um, email address, et cetera. Um, one important point here is, is pointing out the user type, right? If the user type is a vendor, that could be focused in on and, and trended as well. Um, you're seeing in the upper right-hand corner a trend over time, and we're seeing that, that Bruce is, has a risk ranking of, of 100, which is why it's red, um, and that he just spiked up to 100. He's kind of been hovering around you know, 50, 60, 60th percentile and has spiked just in recent times. And so we're going to drill, drill in further to understand um, what's been going on here. And so just to drill in a little bit, this risk score of 100 is, is mentioned earlier, these vectors represent different sets of activities. There are different scenarios we could build through the user interface just by using a click, click and, uh, and drop down type of interface. Um, this is the three lenses I had mentioned earlier where we're looking at it based on the user's behavior, based on the peers with the same manager and the peers with the same department. We can turn these off. Let, let's just look at the user's history. Um, and what we're seeing here is that he's in the 100th percentile um, specifically for um, this um, this risk rating vector of multiple methods per hour. 
And what that tells tells us is is that he suddenly is is um, tripping that um, that vector a lot more often um, than he used to. Um, we're also seeing that he's significantly higher in that on a personal level than are his peers. Right? And so th he's uh, he's behaving in a different way than his peers. Um, and so this is something we want to be able to understand further. And one of the ways of, of being able to understand that further is if we look at the risk um, reduction recommendations, we're seeing the top risk reduction recommendation is is that same file name block then allowed, right? The multiple methods per hour. And I could very quickly click on view details on that screen. And what that's going to do is that's going to um, drill in and start to tell me more information, what happened, what's going on below that, uh, that, uh, that particular vector for this user. And what you're seeing here is, is very quick uh, visualization of what's going on. Three incidents, nine matches. We saw a spike um, at this particular time. Um, you're seeing that it's a, a general data protection, a GDPR policy that, that's being tripped. Uh, if we scroll down a little bit, we can see the behavioral aspect of it. You notice that these are both all red. That's because it's uh, very unusual, uh, both on, on an individual manager and an organizational level. Uh, if we scroll down a little bit farther, we can see that everything he's been doing has, has been, in this set of incidents, has been related um, to the client list spreadsheet. And so right there, very, very quick um, view of, of drilling in, we're able to very quickly see that we've got a person here who's doing things that are unusual with a client list um, over time and, and warrants some further, uh, further um, investigation. And if we want to look even further, uh, what we can do is we can click on uh, we can click on the details in order to be able to drill through and see what the specific incidents are, right? And so um, ICA takes you from that very high level. If you recall, we started out at that chart by channel, um, and this allows you to uh, to go right in all the way down to the the incident level, right? And, and we can uh, and we can see that. Um, over the course of, of 10 minutes on 313, um, Bruce try, tried and got blocked from, from emailing it, from uploading it to the cloud, um, and then finally was successful at, um, at printing the, uh, the client list. And so we, uh, we know we have something uh, that to, to look at here, right? And um, we could go all the way down to the, the detail level if I want to pick a particular incident. I could go all the way down and see. Um, on the left side, you're seeing all the DLP metadata, including things like machine and IP address that, that uh, you know, we can pivot to for further information as well. Um, and then on, on the right side, you're seeing, again, the, the same type of um, information around the user and the behavior that was indicated um, by this activity. And so understanding that is, is key to understanding um, the, the overall situation. Um, if I wanted to, and I was authorized to do so, right, there's a lot of uh, security built into ICA to ensure that nobody gets the unauthorized information, but if I'm authorized to do it, I can click on view DIM payload and through the API, it'll reach out to um, DLP and show the, the payload information in a box. Um, ICA doesn't store any of that information, doesn't store any, any of the sensitive information um, but it, it has the ability to, to poke through through API and, and show it so that to, in order to help the um, the analyst do their job. And you know th throughout the uh, throughout this whole um, trip through Phil's day, lo looking at this incident throughout, what you'll notice is a classify button up here, and I can classify that this particular incident or a group of incidents as um, acceptable as a violation or um, for investigation and, and be able to then, that, that plays into the supervised learning side of the equation to be able to understand um, the, uh, the, the, allowing the system to understand types of events that are not, uh, that are not necessarily um, need, need to be flagged by the engine in, in this situation um, in the future. And so, what we've seen here is, is the ability to flow through. I could also add this to an action plan or, or escalate it in order to be able to, to action this information so that everybody has 
um, everybody um, is, is working off the same page and, and you're able to, uh, to escalate and you're able to communicate um, and, and put it through your, your remediation workflow um, as, as your organization um, desires. Um, implementing it and managing these policies is, is another challenge that we address here, right? If, if, we, if we flip around to the um, data in motion remediation screen, we're able to very quickly look at different groups of policies and, um, and drill in to be able to understand what's going on. And so up here, um, this allows you just direct access to, to remediate these events for these particular people. But in this particular case, I want to understand what's going on with broken business processes. By clicking on the broken business processes, we're able to um, understand the, the clusters of activity that are going on with different groups. Right? And, and in this particular case, the groups that are shown here are the repeat policy offenders, the uh, team broken process, the department broken process, and we can continue drilling in to see uh, which which rules are, are being tripped um, and which incidents are being tripped tripped by that group of, of rules. Um, and from here, we can start to review each, each of the groups of users and the associated policies um, in, in order to, to determine, right, if refinements need to be made in the particular uh, policies. Stephen, it looks like we have a question coming through from one of the panelists. All right, let's take a look. So how is these types of monitoring, tracking, analytics, um, I assume you meant drive, with the GDPR personal employee right for privacy? Um, and so that, that's a great question. And so I'll, I'll preface uh, my response with, uh, I'm not a, an attorney, nor do I play one on TV. And so um, I, I would certainly uh, stress that you, you need to talk to your own legal counsel in order to get final determinations. Uh, within ICA, there, there are a number of um, aspects of, of protection within the tool. And so data masking is, is um, supported throughout the tool where I can, uh, on an individual or a group basis, and so we could have analysts not seeing people's names, but only seeing um, pseudomized, uh, anonymized um, code, code numbers related to users, allowing them to, to do their investigation um, without seeing the actual person's name. Um, in, in terms of the actual monitoring, tracking, and the such, um, there are allowances within GDPR to enable you to, to implement these security tools in support of securing your environment. Um, the key here is, is, is that there's a human in the loop of the analytics, right? And so our analytics are, are queuing up and teeing up the, most, um, the highest priority um, incidents and allowing the analysts to make the most of what they are already using. Um, we're not um, doing the automated end-to-end -end processing, um, saying based on based on this data, boom, disable this user, or or, or boom, do do other uh, types of actions like that. As much as uh, making it much easier for the analyst to a identify the highest priorities and then b allow them to investigate and take action um, on those priorities. And so. You know, there, there are lots of different dimensions to the GDPR puzzle, um, but because of the fact that we're sitting on top of tools that you already have in your environment, um, you know, ICA is not doing the actual monitoring. It's underlying tools that are doing it. Um, we're working under the same um, allowances that, that are made for those other tools, just in, in a general sense. So hopefully that, uh, that answered your question. That was it's a great question, certainly one that's uh, getting a lot of conversation. Um, so just just going back here to the uh, to the team broken process, what we're seeing here is is a number of different groups of of, uh, of of clusters of users that are tripping this policy. I can drill in and see what's what's the nature of these incidents. I can see how many incidents. I could see how many matches. I could see what their normality is. Um, you'll notice the different users with these incidents, um, as well as the normality across those users. Um, You'll also notice down here that we're able to very quickly see what's common and what's different. And this is um, consistent across the, um, the ICA user interface. And so anytime you're looking at a group of incidents, you can very quickly see what's common. Here we're seeing that the source code policy 
um, is what is what uh, is tripping this amongst all these people in the same group um, that um, that are tripping this policy. And so th there may be a business process here that's that's causing these people to to trip this policy. Um, may be consistent with your actual policy or not, but that's for for Phil to to keep investigating. And I, what I can also do, in addition to seeing what's common amongst those incidents, is I can very quickly see what's different amongst, the, amongst those incidents. And so I could see what the different rules are in this group. I could see the different um, users in the group, channels, uh, protocols, et cetera. And I could very quickly filter this if I just click right there on, on the channel uh, pie slice that are, that's focused on an endpoint. I could focus this down and see um, very quickly that it's the endpoint is um, the endpoint events are, are generating a lot of the uh, a lot of the incidents, and I can then with that filter on um, go to the details and being able to to see a lot more um, of what's going on here to be able to uh, either uh, improve the the policy. I could also if if I determined going through this that that all these um, incidents right here are uh, allowable incidents that that we want to we don't want to flag in the future, I can come in here, select them, and, and classify them as acceptable, at which point the, the supervised learning part of the engine will suppress them moving forward because of the fact that, that the, the, this type of category and this, this situation of these events um, was considered acceptable. Um, and so similarly, we, we can take that in the, in the opposite direction as well. So that gives you a sense of, of some of the dashboarding. It gives you a sense of, of some of the investigation capabilities, the, the policy management capabilities. Um, one final area I wanted to dig into is, is our analyzer. And so we have an ad hoc um, data analysis module within the tool. And I could very quickly come down here, for example, and, and look at the DIM incident policy and rule analysis. And this is a uh, drag and drop interface that allows you to very quickly create reports uh, on the fly, you could also uh, save these reports as there are many out of the box that you just saw. I, I just clicked on a save report um, that it's going to pop up and, and Phil can quickly begin to see the policies that are generating a, a high volume of incidents, right? You can, can start to hone in on those rules that, and focus on understanding if he needs to make the adjustments to the rules um, or more importantly, implement perhaps some targeted security training to reduce um, the risks to the organization as well as to reduce the, uh, the the noise a little bit. And I can very quickly see here what the different um, incidents are and what the uh, what's causing some of the problem. And so let's see here. So the, the looks like sort the source code that we just saw, I remember we saw the source code policy um, was what was causing some of the problem earlier. And I can I can drill through here and, and see that, and I can see specifically um, that the let's see the, the PII audit account data <coughs> is particularly generating a lot of incidents, and I can go all the way down and start to see those specific incidents, how many incidents, um, what the um, status was of those incidents, so how many were closed, how many were escalated, how many were new, um, and, and start to to really get an understanding uh, of um, of what's going on here, right? And if I want to find out, I'm sure I'm not the first person to have discovered this. Let's see how these events have been classified um, in in the past. And so I can come down here to our field list, and I can um, add the uh, classification into the mix, right? Very 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 um, quick and easy to. Uh, to do that, and then just in, in doing that, what, what I'm able to do then is, is understand where I'm, I'm seeing now with the classification. If I drill through in the, in the password files, and specifically down on, on the C source code, right? I, I could see that the C source code um, violation right here, uh, how how it's been classified, right? In, in overall, um, where m most of them have have been actually, um, been, most of them are unreviewed. Uh, but I could see very quickly how many have been um, classified as acceptable or classified as uh, as a violation in order to be able to um, to better um, pass judgment and to mod mod either modify my policies 
um, implement training or perhaps change my business process or my tooling to uh, to better align um, how people are doing their jobs with uh, with the policies um, and procedures that that we're using. So hopefully everybody got a sense of the ICA platform, um, its machine learning capabilities, its ability to very quickly give analysts the ability to understand what's most important, what's set of secondary importance, gives the management the ability to, to uh, understand where there may be some trouble areas, um, gives the, the DLP managers the understanding of which, which policies perhaps need tweaking or perhaps um, targeted training needs to be implemented. There's certainly um, a, a lot more that I can show within the tool, um, but, but this is really the, the core um, focus around DLP simplification um, as you're heading towards those other use cases um, that ICA supports as well, things like malicious insider threat detection, um, cyber breach detection, and the such. So I want to thank everybody for, for participating, and certainly uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, we're going to stay on the line here and, and take any additional questions that uh, that everybody wants to ask. I don't see any additional questions. I want to again thank everyone for participating. To find more about semantic information-centric analytics for DOP, please direct your request to sales at nanexinc.com or visit us at our website at www.netxinc.com. Have a great day.